All right, we're back from commercial break, and we have another guest, our final guest on the show. And it is none other than the Mountain Dog, John Meadows. John, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, we're really excited to have you on. I know you're only 10, uh, 10 11 days out uh, by the time this airs from your show. And my first question is, and this is just one that's been eating at me, is you walk around. I mean, do you ever get above 5% body fat all year? <laughs> I typically am about 8% in the off season. That feels very comfortable to me. Um, it allows me to eat, you know, pretty liberally here and there. So I'd say I stick to about 8%. 8% because when, you know, we had messaged briefly uh, earlier in the week and you said, you know, Matt, I'm, I'm really running on empty right now. And I said to myself, you look pretty much the same all year round. So you must be really digging deep to get the last few bits off huh yeah unfortunately i don't distribute body fat evenly which is a a genetic curse it kind of collects in one area on me so you know i have to kind of buckle down to get the last bit off everything else can be ready six weeks out but my uh you know lower back is not i'm not so fortunate there and i got to work a little bit harder to get that off right on um hey taylor uh i know you uh wanted to dig into some different questions than he normally gets. We promised John, for those listening, we promised John we weren't going to make his brain hurt while we're doing the show. Because <laughs> there's, you know, you know, the neurons don't fire on low carbs as well as they should. So um, why don't you give him some of yours, Taylor? Yeah, for sure. I just uh, wanted to dive into a bit of stuff. I know I've been following you for a long time. And I remember back before, you know, you had your corporate job and at the bank and everything like that. I was just curious if it was always your goal to transition into bodybuilding full time, or was it? Were you prepared to work that kind of nine to five atmosphere, and then it just sort of an opportunity presented itself? Wow, that's a good question. You know, as I was approaching forty years old, I um, I took a I took kind of a step back and thought to myself, okay, I'm doing a little better in bodybuilding now in terms of people know who I am. So there's probably an opportunity here for me to pursue that full-time if that's what I want to do. Uh, The question is, do I want to give up a stable income and so forth with a family? And I um, I really tugged around. I'm a very, very conservative person by nature. And so it was hard for me to give up. Uh, what I knew I would get, which would be, a, you know, a salary every week to pay my bills. But I said, you know what, this is, there's never going to be as good of a time as now. And you know what, worst case scenario is if, hey, if it doesn't work out, I can always go back to the bank. I, I'd done very well there. And I, I knew that I could pretty, even if I didn't go back to that one, uh, which I would, but even if I didn't, there'd be plenty of other banks that would hire me quickly based on my experience. So, I just said, you know what? Really, I don't have anything to lose, so I'm just going to go for it. And that's that's made that decision, and I put in a 30-day notice, uh, which is very atypical. Usually, people obviously put in a two-week notice, and uh, usually when you resign at a bank, they walk you out the door immediately. Uh, they don't want you around, yeah. so you, it, it, they don't want you to have any more exposure to any kind of sensitive data or anything like that. Um, well, these guys actually worked me the, every single day, uh, the last 30 days, which told me they really, really trusted me. And, you know, when they walked me out the door, the a couple managers that I worked for just said, hey, look, it doesn't work out. You know, come back anytime you want. You've always got a spot here. And that made me feel good. And um, I still actually keep in touch with them on a fr- just on a friendly basis. And they still, you know, we're still in very good terms. And... Uh, I don't. I don't imagine I'll. I'll ever go back. Um, but I certainly. Uh, that wasn't an easy decision. It was a tough decision. That must have made it a little nicer to have that security net, though, to fall back on, right? Knowing that you could come back. Yeah, I mean, if it was just me, that's one thing. But when you got kids and you got a wife, you know, that's. Yeah, for sure. You can't, you can't just think of everything selfishly. You have to consider other parties involved. Would you have yeah. done it? Would you have done it the same way, John? If. Um they didn't say you could come back and they kind of cut you off? 
Um, what do you mean? I, well, just just in the sense, I know you said you could maybe work at another bank if that bank didn't want you back, but just to play, um, just to play, just to see how risky you really were and doing yeah. bodybuilding full time. What if like the industry would have cut you off the banking industry because you you left it behind? Do you think you still would have made the the jump to leave it? Yeah, because what I did was I managed large projects, and that skill set's pretty transferable to other industries as well. Okay. So um, that yeah, I definitely would have still made the jump. Um, I'm I, I'm pretty good at managing large projects, which actually the experience I got there actually helps me uh, run my coaching business a lot better. Actually, but uh, no, that wouldn't have made a decision. I still would have pushed forward. Awesome. Uh, was your wife supportive, or was she or like obviously she was to some degree? But was there was it met with a little bit of like oh shit like <laughs> here here he goes or or was she right on board with you? Well, she was encouraging me to do it, and oh, she okay. was and she was um she was saying look you're good at this stuff why not take advantage of it you were born to do it and I said you know so I was she was behind me and <clears throat> but still I didn't want to put her at risk no absolutely. Uh, but she was behind me. She's behind me 100%, and she's still behind me. And, you know, it's uh, actually, yes, actually, uh, today is our uh, 13th wedding anniversary. Oh, so. congratulations. And he's on the phone with us. <laughs> We're ruining <Yeah>. everything. <laughs> well, if I wasn't on the phone with you, I'd probably be answering email or in bed to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, you said that uh, it, your old career uh, sort of carried over to your coaching business. Um, is there any, do you have any sort of direct examples or, or any other ways that you're just having an actual long-standing career beforehand has helped you in the business of bodybuilding? Oh, absolutely. Um, in terms of uh, what I do, uh, you know, in terms of day-to-day operations, I manage uh, not as many clients as I used to, but uh it, there's been times where i've had to manage a lot of people and that means you have to very quickly analyze a lot of data and you have to make decisions sometimes you have the data you need to make decisions and sometimes you don't and you just have to make choices and part of that's on your part of that's your gut feeling and your experience but you're always looking for uh you know trends and numbers and facts and uh, feelings and things like that when you deal with people and um, that's that's really how coaching is you know you, you like to have all kinds of different measurables that you can say okay this person's headed this way sometimes it's not always clear though and you, you have to go with your experience and you're not always right uh, the same thing when you run large projects you don't always have the data you meet you, you need to make big decisions but when people sit around and wait and wait until they're 100% sure about everything, that's a, just a surefire way to kill a big project um, because there's always somebody who uh, just doesn't agree or there's always potentially conflicting information. So the other part of that is just organizing information. Um, you guys, I don't know if you've ever seen any of my diet sheets or my training plans, but they're really, really detailed, uh, very detailed. And... Um, that's because uh, two things. Number one, that was what I felt differentiated me um, at the beginning when I started coaching a lot of people was, you know, look at the detail this guy puts into his plans. It's not just a quick, a quick word document. Um, and I believe in that. I believe in doing that for people. And, and when people stop working with me, they can always look back and see every change they made throughout the entire process in you know, they always have that to fall back on. Yeah, they can and learn from it, right? They can learn from it. That's right. And um, there's nothing that makes me happier when someone says, hey, you know what? I'm uh, I'm going to try this on my own now. You've taught me, you know, when to do this, when to do that. And I'm feeling pretty confident about that. I, I love hearing that. Um, I've never asked one single person to work with me, ever. And I don't anticipate on having to do that. I think if you do a good job with people, you, you don't have to comb the backstage areas or get on all the message boards and post 30 pictures of your clients' pics every single day. I mean, you don't have to do that stuff. Your your work will speak for itself, and people will uh, talk highly enough about you to 
you know, you'll, you'll always have uh, opportunities to do a good job for people. Do, do you think the other prep coaches that do sort of the secrecy things, you know, they kind of hint at stuff, but then they, they really want to keep it sort of under wraps um, and so that they can be hired and, and people feel uh, they, 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 they feel the need to, you know, keep them on board like they couldn't do it on their own. Do you think that's just strictly lack of confidence or just sort of just not, you know, just a different approach or what is that? They don't understand business. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, it and I, I have a very good business mentor that taught me this years ago, and basically he taught me that when you give information, um, I don't want to say everything, but when you give a lot of information, people are drawn to that, and in their mind they think you always know more, and you, and you probably do if you're still growing and learning, so they want to continue to learn from you. And if the person wouldn't wasn't going to hire you in the first place. Um, well, you could, you know, you could get some temporary business due to these magical protocols and so forth. But generally speaking, if somebody's going to hire a coach, they're going to hire a coach. Um, you know, I these these magical protocols that people uh, kind of allude to um, are pretty silly. You know, it, I've had some people do you know real well this year, uh, Fouad and Sean Clarita and some other guys. And those guys had the most simple protocol you can even imagine the last week. And, you know, I get clients that say, oh, what are we going to do for the last week, for peak week? I'm like, what are you talking about peak week? How, you know, if you just think about it logically, how many people look better before a show and after a show? Now, what would you guess? What percent? Most, it seems. Most, right. Yeah. yeah. So you tell me why all these stupid peak week protocols are necessary. Yeah. Because I will tell you, then why is it that over 90% of the time people look better before and after a show? It's because of these these guys selling these magical protocols. You know, I have no problem telling you what I had Fouad do and Sean Clary to do because it's so boring you would laugh. You'd be like, that's it. And, you know, both those guys, you know, I, I've had 11 people compete this year, which I know is not a lot, but eight of them have actually won. And... um you know, I can tell you this, the, the largest diuretic protocol I used with any of them was one quarter of a diazide the night before. And that was, that's the most extreme one I've had. Um, but, you know, all these guys like to, you know, that's how they can sell uh, this magic. My, my opinion is just get in shape and, tweak, and just tweak the last week. Just a little more carbs, a little less carbs, a little more water, a little less water. But these depletions are out of hand. These loads are crazy. These people thinking they're going to magically manage these spills that they get from loads, yeah, overloading, you know. And what happens is you see somebody who does well with it, so you know they're all over the internet, but you don't see the nine people that did the same thing and looked horrible. So you don't see that. So you see, oh my god, well this must work awesome. Huh. Um, but the truth is the body is constantly changing and evolving and you, there is no magic protocol for anyone. You just got to get their ass in shape. got to work hard. And the harder they get, the leaner they are, the less chance they're going to look bad on stage, you know? Absolutely. Hey, John, John, where are you putting most of your uh, business efforts in nowadays? Or is it more on the website or is it with your clients? Uh, well, I'm diversifying quite a bit. Um, I've got uh, the, the web the website membership thing is uh is probably about twenty to thirty percent of my business. Um, I've got two ebooks out. I got two more ebooks that are underway. That's slowly becoming a larger percentage of my business. Coaching is probably twenty or thirty percent of my business. Um, a small part of what I do uh, is with uh, supplements. Um, I have some other projects underway too. I've got, I've got one that I can't get into any detail on, but uh, um, <clears throat> I'm going to be developing a food bar uh, with another company. That's it's just food. It's uh, but it's it's pretty amazing. I, I'm really excited about it actually. Um, and I, of course, I got uh, the thing going with Prime. Um, Aaron's been real good to me, so I'm very very happy there. Um, that's another, so I'm, you know, a couple of different things, uh, here and there, you know, I try to, my business mentor taught me to never get reliant on one source of income. And I never I was, forgot. That. I, I was just going to ask you that. It would you, if you were to like give advice to a young guy coming up, would you tell him to diversify instead of just tunnel visioning on one aspect? 
Absolutely. And that's actually what I do tell um, a lot of the guys I work with that, you know, want mentorship type help. You know, there's a good guy in South Africa. I'm helping Andrew Hudson that, you know, just sent me a note and said, man, I just had my biggest month I've ever had in my life. You know, I've done this, this, and this. And it had nothing to do with bodybuilding. It was all how we've changed his business model and how he's done that. And that's pretty rewarding, too. I, I find that I find that really just fun to deal with, just my yeah. business model. And, and uh, it's like bodybuilding. You know, I, it's trial and error. Business is the same way. You know, you, you make mistakes. You learn from them. I've certainly made a ton of business mistakes, too. But um, but I find that stuff real, real fascinating, and, and I enjoy it. Let's uh, let's transition a little bit into because you got your show coming up. But um, while we're on business, do you um, tell your clients, or even even like Aaron or PJ at Prime Nutrition, or just everybody that you're dealing with, do you guys do you tell them that I might have to pull back a little bit so I can focus on me, or do you just like push through it and and who cares if you, you're exhausted at the end of the day? I just push through it honestly. Which one of these are you? The gullible, uninformed gym goer who gets hypnotized by $12,000 supplement ads with flashy made up scientific terms created by a sales and marketing team? Or are you a knowledgeable, advanced athlete, bodybuilder, powerlifter, or fitness woman who knows the real deal? Well, let me tell you about fitness and bodybuilding's dirty little secret truenutrition.com. For people who know what's really going on, skip the retail sales team and go right to the manufacturer at truenutrition.com. Truenutrition.com cuts out the middleman and is not only a source, but is also the manufacturer of raw ingredients for bodybuilding and fitness. At truenutrition.com, you can customize your own proteins, carbs, and fats. Put what you want in the supplements and make sure the other guys aren't putting bunk ingredients and fillers in your products just to make a fast buck. You can even customize your own oatmeals. You can use the do-it-yourself customizer to design your own supplements the way you want them designed. Stop being a newbie and start making your own supplements. You can at truenutrition.com. For an extra 5 to 10% off your orders, use the code PROJECTBB in the discount code box at checkout. That's PROJECTBB and get 5 to 10% off at truenutrition.com. Muscle Sport International prides itself on being an exclusive sports nutrition brand. But what does the term exclusive really mean when it comes to sports supplements? Anyone can create a formula, have it mass produced and distributed throughout the market with profit as the only goal. The game changer is when a group of people put their heart and soul into a brand and make sure that every single detail is in line before a product ever sees a shelf. Visit us online at www.musclesport.com and see for yourself what Exclusive is all about. Offering a wide range of products from pre, intra, to post-workout nutrition, along with our diet and anabolic series, musclesport.com is your one-stop shop. Visit musclesport.com and take your supplementation to the elite level. It was uh, much more difficult when I had a huge client load, but since I'm able to work with less people now and prefer it that way, it, um, it's, it's helped out, especially uh, competing, and, and I, I am able to push through it, thankfully. Now, you got your show coming up, and um, I think, for judging you know from the pictures you posted on Facebook and Instagram, um, you look different. I mean, it was noticeable to me that you look different this year. And you're in your 40s, and I know everybody says, you know, you, you can't progress past a certain age, but it's almost like you've hit a fountain of youth. Um, is there anything? I know your waist is, it looks smaller. It looks even smaller than it was last year. Um, what, are you, what are you doing? Is there any secret? Um, I've definitely done a few things differently. I don't know if I'd call them a secret. I'll tell you what has hurt me in the past is uh, a lack of abdominal control and development. Um, speci- when I say in the past, I mean post-surgery. If you look at my abs in my old pictures before I had surgeries, I actually actually had really good abs. Um, but I've had um, a lot of nerve damage in my stomach, and the le- lower left-hand quadrant of my abdominal wall just tingles from all the nerve damage. Uh, if I try to contract the abs, it feels like scar tissue is tearing. And this has been really crazy. The last... 
it's, it got a little bit better last year, but I still couldn't train my abs really for nationals. Um, but in the last literally like three months, the nerve, the nerves have completely re- repaired. Uh, I have no idea why. I have no clue why. I didn't do anything special, but I noticed the tingling just kept getting less and less and less. Then I could train them. Um, and then I started doing one of old Milo Sarchev's old ab workouts, and I do it every single day. And lo and behold, my lower abs started sucking in. My waist looked tighter. Um, and I think that's made a, a pretty good difference, actually. Um, you know, um, I just, I don't think people realize, man, when you don't have any kind of nervous uh, system <laughs> in your, uh, you don't, when you can't control your muscles, it's just really hard to everybody. Well, just keep your abs tight. When you don't understand, I'm trying. It's hard. <laughs> but. Um, Said every fat see, guy ever. No. <laughs> well, you'll uh, you'll see, when I do the team you you'll see I'm able to really really suck in my lower abs now, um, and you'll see a difference. Now, I still got a wide waist. Uh, I'm still blocky, but but everything is flatter and it's better. And I still got a little bit of scar tissue in there, so they won't look perfect. But I think you'll see a noticeable difference. And I just want it to be one of those things where every time I lose a show, people say, "Well." Your abs killed you. I just, if my yeah. abs can just look decent where people go, wow, you know, his abs and waist are a little tighter, then I don't, you know, I don't think anybody's going to out muscle me or out condition me. Um, but we'll find out. Maybe I'll get my ass kicked. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> John, do you think the, uh, the, ab- the abdominal issues are the main thing that stopped you from sort of getting the placings that y- you could have been getting or maybe a pro card or things like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Every single show I'd, I've done, I've got that I've got second place. They're just like, well, you know, you're, you know, uh, you know, Dennis Hobson just had a smaller waist than you. Uh, you know, this guy had a smaller waist than you. And um, you're, you, you started, you know, getting, you know, when you came out, you couldn't really keep your stomach tucked in. Um, you know, and, I'm, and I talked to Steve Weinberger last year and he said, John, you got to keep your stomach tucked in. And I was thinking to myself, damn, I'm trying, man. You don't, <laughs> people don't realize how hard it is for me. But, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, they're still going to be, you know, it's, they still got to judge on what they see. So it's nobody's fault. It's just something I had to correct. And I just, I didn't know how, was, how or if it would ever get fixed, to be honest with you. And I've just been like, I don't know how or why this happened, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe my growth hormones fixing my ner- <laughs> nervous tissue. It's finally, finally hit the right amount of time. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> He ditched the blue tops is what he did. Uh, I ditched that garbage 10 years ago. <laughs> there you go, everybody. That's the secret. <laughs> yeah. um, so what, what, what gives, man? If you win your pro card, are you going to go uh, do another show this year? Or are you just going to sit back and say, fuck, I finally did it and just hang out? Well, you know, I've been saying when my body goes backwards um, because it's bound to, uh, then I'll stop. I don't want to. I don't want to stop if I'm getting better. And I almost go into every year. I think there's even like a small part of me that wants, wants my body to look worse. So I have an excuse to stop. (laughs) But like this year, like, you know, everything's just coming together really good. I think I've got a little better package. I certainly don't look worse. And I was really concerned that I wouldn't be able to look as good as I did the nationals. I thought the nationals, I actually, Look pretty decent. Um, been the first call out uh, at the heavies, but I think this package is even a little better even than nationals. Um, so, I guess to answer your question, I feel like if I'm improving and it's not messing my life up, you know, um, then I don't mind competing once a year, maybe twice a year, but. If I'm not getting any better, if I'm getting worse, if my family life's impacted, if I don't spend time with my kids, and then it's not just not worth it to me. Um, sure. So we'll see what happens. What kind of what kind of pro shows would you would catch your eye the most? Just out of curiosity, like have you thought about like a certain tier or you know location or what pro show do you think would be one that would be something you'd be interested? In? <laughs> well, sure would be nice to do a two twelve show. You know? Yeah. Do you think you could hit that? Well, I'm. Uh, did you guys see the picture I had today? After yeah, that? yeah, we have a thread yeah. on Project Wide. Um, I'm uh, 220. Okay, yeah, so it's um, not out of. You know, it's so you know, and I just uh, last weekend 
I was able to train with Flex Lewis. Yeah. He's way bigger than me. So if he can make weight, then I'm thinking, surely I can make weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, how, was, how was training with Flex? Is that your first time? Uh, Flex is awesome, man. He's a yeah. good dude. He's a blue collar, uh, hard worker. Um, I, I can't say enough good about the guy. I've, I've always had tremendous respect for him. I was a little nervous meeting him, and I'll tell you why. Because, you know, you get these people up on a pedestal, and sometimes when you meet them, you're kind of let down. Yeah. And I don't put too many people in bodybuilding on a pedestal. Um, and the last experience I had with doing that with somebody, I was really let down. And I was just like, you know what? I'm never going to go train with somebody again. I don't care how much I like them. But when I met Flex and actually talked to him, uh, we actually talked more about business than anything. And then we trained together and I saw Hardy Works. And um, I just... Oh, it was awesome. I it was awesome. I can't wait. Like I can't literally wait to get back and train with him again. So, uh, good dude. Definitely, uh, definitely an awesome guy. It's cool to hear because you know he's one of those guys that we don't ever get to hear from because he's been stuck in his contract. So, um, I was like getting the the secondhand stories or information from people that actually know him. Um, you know, let's because uh, we promised we're gonna we weren't gonna keep you for. Uh, too long tonight. So actually, I just want to get into something really quick. And I did it. Uh, it's a little game. I did it with Ron Partlow uh, about a month ago because he's prepping for his show. And I said, "Oh, so oh. you just this with people who get second place?" I see. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I, yeah. I got a laundry. I got a laundry list of guys from uh, your, yourself to uh, Dusty Hanshaw was in the list for a while. <laughs> so basically, this game was how brain dead is John Meadows. A few weeks out from a show and then we're going to see you know if you're on pace to be in condition based upon your answer so if you get them all right you're like way behind in prep and if you miss okay. them all you're looking pretty good so <laughs> okay so you could add this into your your coaching plans if you could test your clients instead of uh pick progress pictures i like this, I like this. good all right, all right here we go john the first question I'll, I'll give you an easy one who is the vice president of the united states Um, um, this is I a good sign. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and that shredded. was the easy You're one. Shredded. He must be shredded. Okay. Um, that's, jo- that's Joe Michelle. Biden. Oh, okay. I was going to say Michelle Obama. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be the president. <laughs> yeah, that's, probably more, that's probably closer to the truth. Yeah. All right. We'll do another, we'll do another question. Cause you're a, you're a, you know, ex banker. Uh, yeah. what, what is 12 times 12? Uh, well, 10 times 10 is 100. 144? Yes. All right. All right. Oh all right. This one, um, this is a, this is a bodybuilding prep coach sort of a question. The third one. What okay. what protein is known to thin the skin? Oh, that's the, the, the tilapia version <laughs> with a, uh, special uh, RNA sequencing in the DNA and um, a little bit extra phenylalanine and a little bit less uh, histidine. Yeah, it's a very special protein that magically thins your skin. <laughs> you just took it, it to another level of uh, thin skinning information there. That, that would be a true answer, though, for those wondering. Um, all right, we'll do another one. Uh, this is a true or false question. Is there a product on the market which creates a quad sweep while using the step mill? Uh, synthol. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, 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 Taylor, will we accept that? Yeah, that's almost like too correct. I think the answer was too true and too good. <laughs> um, and then the, the final one, a yes or no question: Is the secret to success shitting blood? No, it's pissing blood. Uh, oh, pissing blood! <laughs> <laughs> Any normal man can shit blood. Yeah, I think I've, I've done that for years. You know. <laughs> I was telling Taylor, I think the secret to you getting down to the two twelves is just donate more organs. Yeah, I'm running a little low on them now, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> hey, Taylor, any uh, any last questions you want to get to John before we let him go? Uh, let's see here. I know you got something in there. Yeah, there's a few. Um, I was just sort of curious on, uh, you know, John, you've pretty much stayed out of all sort of drama and all that shit you see on Facebook and all this crap. Uh, a lot of people sort of in your position, not your necessarily your position, but similar positions to yourself, 
um, they make names for themselves by you know talking shit and just generally causing trouble. Um, is it hard to hold back when you see it and dive into it? Like, how do you? Is it hard for you to stay out of it? Are you tempted, but you know that it's not going to benefit you and it's not really you? Or is it really easy? You just don't care. The older I get, the less I care. You know, um, I give you an example. Like when uh, MD. The forum there, I had a couple guys compete a couple years ago, and they both did not look good. And there was, there were things going on there that I didn't know about, to which pretty much the whole world found out about, and it had nothing to do with my planning. But everybody was saying, Meadows doesn't know how to coach, he doesn't know how to get people lean. Um, and, and it was bothering me, because I'm like, you guys don't understand, this, you know, this guy wasn't doing this, 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 but I don't want to, ha- but I'm not going to get on there and hang my people out to dry, that's, I wouldn't yeah. do that. But, I mean, I remember telling my wife, I'm like, so, this is how it is, I mean, everybody just thinks I suck, and I was, and I, honestly, I was upset. Yeah. And then, you know, you see more people on there say things, and then you're like, you know what, these people's opinions actually really don't matter, because every one of these opinions... There's a hundred people that support me and that know that know a lot about me and what I stand for, and that's what really matters. And I don't like to spend time. If you notice, when I get into like a little spat, it'll just be like a one liner is all throw out somebody. Yeah, yeah. Um, like that's all the time you're going to get from me because I would rather give my time to something productive and to the good people out there. When you go to like an actual bodybuilding show, I mean, everyone you're surrounded by people who are positive and supportive. So it makes you wonder, like, where are all these internet people? Like, there's really not that many of them. They just speak the loudest online, right? Yeah, I mean, you got that David Kua guy on MD that's just a complete troll. You got you always got a couple guys like that that you can't really take them serious. It's almost like you just kind of you know you're just kind of watching them and laughing at them but help. <laughs> yeah, but. But for every guy like that, though, there's there's a hundred people that are like, man, I respect how hard you work and how you treat your people and how you run your business, and um, that's what matters to me. And I get I get so much support, man. It's um, you know I will go out to see a movie on the weekend here here at the mall, and you know two or three people will stop me and want to get a picture, and I never turn down a picture. I think it's a complete honor to, for someone to ask me that. I, I don't know why they would ask me that, but um, anybody who treats me like that um, is it's a real honor for me. And I guess I just some in some ways I feel like I'm still the trailer park kid that grew up, you know, uh, poor as dirt. And then in some ways I just um, I feel just you know incredibly thankful for the people that support me. Um, so, you know, every, every month that goes by, I get better and better. Um, I get better at analyzing situations and trying to figure out do I, it's like, it's like taking on a new client. You know, when you get this funny feeling in your spine that, you know what, you may want to pass on this. This might turn into a nut job. An ordeal. Yeah. You know, you, where John, how, how did you handle yeah. the day? How did you handle the day Palumbo enter MD saga? Um, I popped off and I said something. Um, I don't even remember what it was, but um, I did pop off and say something because uh, scientifically, um, he just you know he didn't really he doesn't really get that part of it. But I have no issues with Dave now. I mean, I've exchanged emails with him. I mean, we're not best buds or anything, but I don't carry grudges. I don't carry grudges. You know, did he back down and say that you were right, or did he hold his guard up? I, well, we didn't really have a debate. You know, uh-huh. he posted something, I posted something. And, you know, I think Dave just kind of likes controversy because it generates well, traffic. And- well, he was trying to slam Aaron and send PJ is essentially what was going on. You kind of got caught in the crossfire, right? Because it yeah. was their product and, you know, their history. I, I, that's how yeah. I saw it, at least. And you kind of got dragged into it. My, well, my only thing was, um, it, it, you know, I saw the word scam. And. Yeah. And I, and I developed it, and I know it's not a scam. And there's and there's thousands of people that will tell you that it has worked really well for him. Has it worked for a hundred percent of the people that have taken it? You know, probably not. But I think the success rate with it is as good as any supplement out there. And um, I put a lot of work into it, and I work with a lot of smart people on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, those things happen. And when I see people like on the boards talking about the products I developed and they're not happy, I'm okay with that. I, I, that's okay. We don't. We don't all have to love the same things. 
Um, in fact, it doesn't bother me at all. I just didn't like the fact I saw the word scammer. You know, that right. was like, yeah. wait, you know, that's a that's an attack on my character. For um, sure. So that, you know, I guess for a, a, a one day at least got me riled up. And then I was <laughs> You know, you, talking about you know you know you and I, John, we like dogs. Even Taylor doesn't. Taylor doesn't like dogs, so not everybody can like. This is bullshit. You're just throwing lies again. I've had a dog my entire <laughs> life up until like a year and a half ago. <laughs> I love dogs. John's the mountain dog, yeah. and you hate dogs. So. I kill them actually. I eat, I eat them for my main protein source. You can't all like the same stuff, but uh. <laughs> probably, there's probably countries where they do that. I'm not, you know, I yeah. You do. I, you obviously know mountain dog comes from Bernese mountain dogs, though, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not for me, like living up in the mountains, and I'm some hardcore <laughs> living in a cabin Unabomber. He's like Rambo. <laughs> yeah, he's the Rambo of bodybuilding. Um, well, I was when you were talking about, you know, I was thinking that, like, I, I bet you we're Guru John. Are you familiar with Guru Hans on the board? Yeah, I am. Yes. Yeah. He, well, he lives in a, in a country where they actually eat dogs. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh man, I thought he was my friend. <laughs> yeah, well, he is, but you better watch. You know, he just he wants drives. to get close to you. Yeah. Okay. He he, he's actually got a, he's got a big crush on one of your clients, Tony Searle. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, he's always po- he even today he posted a picture and he goes, "Boy, this guy's hot." And I said, "Boy, do you have something to tell us here, Guru?" Yeah, some questionable <laughs> stuff going on over there. Yeah. Hey, John. Uh, just before uh, you know, Matt will probably have some other ridiculous question for you. But I was just curious uh, <laughs> if the next uh, when you do stop competing, whenever you're done, you know that. What's training going to be like for you? No one's going to question, you know, your dedication if you sort of ease up. Are you going to be pushing it kind of like you are now, or maybe just a few less days a week? Or what is bodybuilding going to become for you when the comp- the competing stops? Well, my uh, training is it's nothing like people. I I don't think people really know what it's like now because I've had to make so many adjustments due to my age. There's so many things that I can't do. Yeah. Uh, for instance, squats. Uh, my f- absolute favorite exercise I haven't been able to do for two or three years with a, a barbell. Um, and there's so many exercises like that that I just can't do. It's forced me to think, um, okay, how can we tear, you know, how can we continue to progress without doing this and this and this and this? And my, my theories on training I've, I've found the last year have really been really been uh changing a little quite a bit um just in regards to tension and staying healthy and um there's just <clears throat> there's so many things i've learned because i've been forced to learn them whereas you know when i was younger i might have just tried to push through it and, and hurt myself um you know because um, i've actually done that a lot um but i you know i don't envision it i i love thinking and I love building programs, um, but me personally, I probably wouldn't be in the gym six, seven days a week. I might, you know, go in five days a week or four days a week. So I might be in there a little bit less, but I'm always going to be thinking. And, you know, there's nothing cooler than for me to get somebody like Fouad who's already big as a house and you put 10, 15 pounds of muscle on them. You know, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and that was really due, you know, mostly to it. I won't say it was all due to his training, but... Training definitely improved his physique. That's the kind of stuff that I really, really dig. I really, really, it's exciting because, um, you know, you, <clears throat> even though we're all a little bit different, there's a lot of lessons that I think I've learned that I can apply to these guys that have been pounding their bodies for years and then, you know, enable them to continue their careers and to train longer and not get hurt so much uh, and still grow and still look better. Um, I think that's kind of where everything is headed for me honestly awesome so your own training you'll you'll always be in the gym but you're not gonna you know it, it'll it'll come down a few gears yeah i can't imagine just not going to the gym i mean that's that's like not eating breakfast that's like not eating pancakes <laughs> uh, i'd rather be dead exactly yeah that's right well, John, we uh, we wish you all the luck in the world and your show coming up and hopefully you finally get that card thanks for uh, coming on the show with us Hey, my pleasure, guys. Those are some those are some funny questions, man. That was good stuff. I like that. <laughs> Very, we, we promised uh, we wouldn't uh, drill you or grill you too hard. So thanks again, John, and uh, best of luck. My pleasure, guys. Thank thanks, you. John.